uh, so many women in the room, but it would have been greater to have more men in the room. You know, why are we feeding the stereotype? Why are we having this event in March? You know, a few days before Women's Day. And then we want to change everything. Um, how will it change? Why don't you have this event in December? Why don't you have it in September? In fact, why don't you have it once a quarter? And don't call it, you know, celebrating women. Just say, you know, celebrating people. Um, and I, I'm saying this, I'm, you know, I don't want you to take this lighthearted because I think, in my view, that is the crux of the issue we are dealing with. It is, our behavior is nothing but a reflection of how we think, how we feel, what we believe people's expectations are of us, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And then we get into the syndrome of, you know, every year, once a year, and I can tell you, in, you know, round about the last week of February, I keep, I get so many invites to come and address Women's Day. And I'm saying, why are these people waking up every February? Isn't every day Women's Day? Isn't every day Children's Day? Isn't every day, you know, Secretary's Day or Teacher's Day or whatever? I think because we tend to compartmentalize, we confuse ourselves and we confuse everybody else. So I'm urging all of us here to say, don't do Women's Day in March. In fact, you take any day and it's a day for everybody. In fact, don't do Women's Day. It's almost like saying, you know, I want to go on a diet, but one day in 365 days, I will do a fast and then I expect to be slim and trim. And I mean, it's as ridiculous as that. You know, we are talking about changing very embedded mindsets. We are talking about changing years and years of conditioning for a variety of reasons. And then we feel if we bring attention to it on one day, suddenly things will be different. So my request to the men in this room, and I was saying to Kaushik, uh, you know, during the tea break, I said, now you do another event and call men and have 80% of the room full of men and maybe 20% women, the exact opposite of this. And then let's have the conversation. In fact, I think the conversation has to be a 50-50 conversation. We are talking about corporates. We are talking about work environments, which are nothing but a microcosm of society. What happens outside the corporate office is what happens inside the corporate office to a large extent. Of course, businesses have tried to make rules and we have all kinds of guidelines and so on and so forth. But that hasn't changed things very much. Uh, you know, again, it is very much a pyramid. It is a pyramid in the case of men as well. Not every management trainee ends up becoming a CEO. However, uh, not so many men drop out of the workforce as women do. You know, yesterday I was uh, at another event, a very large global multinational sort of based in, uh, in Bangalore. And again, you know, it's March, we have to do Women's Day. And, you know, again, my refrain was get the men in the room. And finally, some chaps from uh, HR showed up. And my point is that unless the business people are there, it's not going to change. And I think to some extent, the responsibility in a sense or the onus is on all of us uh, to cause those conversations to happen. Um, so, my, I'm going to make a few points which I have thought about, which have uh, certainly, I think, worked for me. And, uh, you know, you have to choose what works for you. Uh, what is what I think is the right thing may or may not be uh, the right thing for you. But whatever you do, you've got to be authentic. Whatever you do, you have to be true to yourself. Don't put yourself last. Don't undersell yourself. Um, you know, I think the biggest thing, if you could, you know, think about and reflect, not just today, but every day, is, uh, you know, what is it that gives you confidence? And why should there be such a discussion around your gender? And let me explain this by, at least in a simple way that I think about it. When I come to work and walk in through this door, which is my workplace, uh, what is important to my employer? 
what is important is my skill set what is important is my knowledge what is important is my track record what is important is uh, my attitude what is important is my aptitude what is important is you know how agile a learner i am what is important is my you know skills whether it is collaborative skills or any other skills so when you stop and think about it where is gender in all of this frankly it doesn't exist we have made it to be such a big deal that we are talking about it we are saying you know entry level we get 50% women by the time they reach the top it's only 10% or whatever the numbers are and therefore we have to say why are we giving gender so much of importance there was another very large global company that had invited me and i <laughs> i think at the end of the day they probably regretted why they had invited me because they presented some data and i said uh, well show me the attrition numbers for men and they didn't even have those numbers and finally when they scrambled and got those numbers well guess what the attrition rate was same in fact it was a little bit higher for men except that they leave for different reasons so again what i'm saying is don't take anything as a given or as granted you know many people will say women take a break and of course if you want to have a family you must take a break but in a 40 year working career you know what is 6 months it's not even a rounding off error and we make such a big deal out of it so i am saying to all the men and women in this room of course you have to go back and do your best to say how does this conversation change we have to be effective i'm not talking about you know we don't need to be revolutionary about anything uh but we have to be effective in what we do <laughs> and the important thing is for all of you here for all of us here who are in the game you know another important thing is that you can't change the rules of the game by standing at the periphery you can only change the rules of the game by coming into the center of the game and playing the game playing the game on your rules i'm not saying on the rules of men or on the rules of women you play the game on your individual rules because you are an individual don't get stereotyped into women are like this and men are like that and women from north india are more aggressive and from south india are not etc etc so i think what we have to remember is first of all it's important to say are you doing what you really want to do i mean if you don't want to be here doing a job you don't have to you want to go and teach you know children in a school in the village go and do that so it is not about you in the context of everybody else it is you in the context of what you want to do with your life and i think that's another important thing it's about you know many times i get asked you know with all this travel and everything what about work life balance <laughs> and frankly i have uh, never thought about work life balance because i think work is one of the things i do in life and one of the things that you do in life we do so many other things in life you know we travel we go and see a play we uh, you know we write we take photographs so it's not about how your life fits into your work it is about how your work fits into your life and i think that's another very big difference and we don't have to be you know number one in everything that we are doing again yesterday you know i uh, in the question answer session somebody said but don't you think women are special you know we wake up we make sure the kids go to school we do this and i'm sitting and say why does that make you special uh, you know you're just taking the role of five people and to please yourself you're saying i'm very special because you know i can drop the kids to school i can pick up groceries on the way i can go and do a great presentation to my client i can come home and have you know wonderful uh, food on the table i don't think those are the issues we need to be concerned about i think the most important thing each one of us has to answer for ourselves is are you doing what you really want to do and if the answer to that that is yes it doesn't matter what you're doing it doesn't matter to me frankly whether you're working 9 to 5 or 5 to 9 or what you're doing the most important thing is 
are you doing what you really want to do and are you doing it on your terms and not on anyone else's terms i've also been in the corporate world long enough not just in india but i've had the opportunity actually to live and work in six different countries on five continents you know i travel a lot i continue to travel and it's not as though you know we are that different of course there are countries in scandinavia and other countries which are far ahead when it comes to equality and diversity and so on but i think i would not be wrong when i said that it is a universal phenomena where you know the catalyst in the usa and various other bodies elsewhere are still talking about the representation of women if we can get it up to 30% well wouldn't that be great and i think that is a question that certainly corporates need to answer but that is also a question that all of us need to create the answer to that is also a question that has to be answered by the ecosystem and um, you know i i keep thinking that you know where is that catalyst going to come from and you know we certainly need more renaissance men we need more dangal dads you know who will stand up for uh, you know for their daughters or for their sisters or their spouses and that is the only way in which we will make what we are doing equal uh, so my invitation to all of you is that think about what is it that is making you accept the status quo uh, why are we not challenging enough now again by that i don't mean that uh, you know we have to suddenly go and start demanding things etc the word i would use is effective um i think there is a realization certainly more and more companies are talking about it that you know gender diversity is important but you know more important than gender diversity is diversity of thinking diversity of perspective um you know what is the point of having senior people who can't think out of the box and we keep you know we keep saying we've got to think out of the box and you know very often i used to say but i don't even see the box uh, so the analogy i would use is it's a wonderful analogy which i read somewhere you know somebody asked amelia earhart uh, what is it that she loves about flying and i think her answer is uh, for me sums up a lot of what we're talking about in terms of mental modeling she said when you are in an aircraft up there what you see are horizons you don't see boundaries okay i think we have to stop and think we are putting boundaries around ourselves we are putting boundaries around ourselves in terms of you know expectations in terms of behavior in terms of all of those things what if you just forgot about those boundaries by that i don't mean that we are going to be irresponsible by that i don't mean that we will not take accountability i don't mean any of that but i do mean that or what i intend to get across to all of us here is that um unless we question unless we question the status quo the status quo is not going to change there is enough energy in the status quo to keep it as it is which is why it's called the status quo for that to change um you know everything has to change and the change has to begin somewhere and my invitation to all of us here is that all of you by virtue of the fact that you are here by virtue of the fact that you have senior and responsible roles and positions whether you're an entrepreneur responsible for other people or you're a professional working in an organization you have the power to question you have the power to change you have the power to transform it might take a long time but it will change uh you know so i was the first ever executive from india to go and work in south africa man or woman doesn't matter uh i was also one of the first professionals to actually go and work in chile now any of you who have been to latin america you know you know that it is as macho as it gets and so i had just moved to chile i was the division president for the coca cola company you know the highest job that you can get in south latin america and there was this big you know uh, party with uh, very senior people 
and uh, someone came to me and said, uh, so it's very difficult in an um, environment like that to place somebody like me who is single, uh, who just shows up on her own. And, uh, you know, everybody else is very senior people, you know, politicians, corporate people, etc, uh, etc. Et so someone comes to me and says, ah, where does your husband work? And I turned around and I said, yeah, actually, I don't have a husband. So then they're completely foxed. Then they don't know what to make of this, because if you don't have a husband, how come you're here? Uh, so then after, you know, some humming and hawing and pauses, um, uh, you know, so the question is, ah, so what do you do? So then I say, I work for the Coca-Cola company. And then, you know, at least they begin to put things in perspective. They all know the Coca-Cola company. And then they turn around and say, ah, you must be working for Jorge. So he was the big chief there. And of course, my most thrilling moment was when I turned around and said, actually, Jorge works for me. <laughs> so, so, you know, but it just shows you how conditioned, I don't blame them. You know, suddenly if we saw somebody just walk in here and we say, okay, what is this person doing here? You know, you're talking a different accent, though I must say, I passed off several times as, uh, you know, Colombian or uh, Argentinian. Uh, but I think those are the things. Some of these things, you know, we have to take lightheartedly. We can't be so serious about everything all the time. And when you take things somewhat lightheartedly, it also gives you a different perspective of seeing the issue and of getting into a different conversation. But let us stop doing Women's Day. Let us stop doing it in March. Let us, uh, you know, let us actually change the conversations from gender to conversations around competency. Let's change the conversations from conversations around gender to con conversations ar around contribution, to conversations around the value that you add, to con uh, conversations around the perspective you bring. And suddenly, the whole place looks different. Now, it's not gonna happen suddenly. You know, you have to work at it. And hopefully, each of you in your organizations, will have people, uh, men especially, at senior levels, who will work with you to bring about that change. I can tell you in my case, I was really, really fortunate to have, uh, you know, wonderful uh, senior managers, whether it was Cadbury's or Coke or even Britannia, uh, basically supporting me. I, you know, I was sent from uh, Cadbury's to first work in the UK in marketing uh, you know, today a lot of people go from India and work, but this was back in 84 and, you know, nobody from marketing in India, uh, you know, had gone out and worked there, unless of course you were an Indian born abroad and so on and so forth. Uh, I went to Nigeria on my own at a time when, you know, lots of men would not have gone to Nigeria, but it worked for me. Um, everything that works for one person may not work for another person. So you have to choose your path and the good news is you have that choice. But you don't have to take somebody else's perception about you as a given. You know, if you don't respect yourself, if you are not confident about yourself, if you don't have self-esteem, nobody can give it to you. Not your mother, not your sister, not your best friend, not your husband, not your children, nobody. Um, and that is something that each one of us uh, has to believe in and that is something that each one of us has to develop. And, you know, go out, it's a game. I mean, I think life is a game. We get up every morning and we've got to play the best strokes that we can and hope it will work for us and for everybody else. Thank you.